Okay, now I'm a little more awake. I wrote up my game plan and now let me actually break down my thought process of everything that's going on right now. So overall, am I bullish? Yes, I am bullish. Why? Daily broke structure to the upsides. Uh, daily broke structure to the upside as well as retracing to that for a valley gap. But I see price doing one of two things, of course, because they can only do one of two things. One, continue to fill orders at this daily order block, push price back to the downside into this daily for value gap again, which would be around a, yeah, that would be a daily drop. That'd be a significant drop, right? Of whatever percentage. And or continue to be bullish and validate this for our imbalance bam far for valley gap pushing price to the upside so we're gonna sit here and watch and see what price actually does because i'm sure there's some people that are like lonnie we just took out hourly highs and broke structure to the downside yes that's true that is true i'm not invalidating that but i'm gonna be patient i want to see how price action reacts due to us currently being down i want to see are we going to continue to push further down or are we you know going to reverse later in the day and be bullish because and follow overall um time frame bias so that's my thought process i do have a and if um my and if is primarily <laughs> if price actually continues to melt um we'll, con we'll look and see what possible draws liquidity could be because that would be a one hour break structure to the downside and we'll we'll go in and plan everything out together but right now we're just gonna wait to see what price action wants to do see how it develops um also something that may help my thought process a little yeah and that in order for us to retrace 0.4 percent i mean i think that's a significant percentage to retrace if you had to ask me what's most probable it's hard to say but i think being i think bearish sorry can't Put the sense together i'm more bearish on the day than bullish if you know you have to sit there and ask me okay lonnie what's your thought process of it due to the percentage of us being down already but overall am i still bullish yes but we're gonna sit here let price action develop for a little more for a little let price action develop for a little bit more for a little while just let price actually develop. Um, we did break for our structure to the downside, so I'm also keeping that in mind for a bearish bias. Um, nonetheless, we are going to not looking at it. Maybe we bearish on the day. So let's see what happens. We'll be back when a we either find an entry either to the upside or to the downside, or B price action develops a little bit more um and gives us more confidence for with whichever bias so i'll be back in a minute pen so yes i did enter on a buy to the upside some people probably right now are like lonnie why did you do this i'm gonna break it down but um nonetheless yeah so yes on gold we j did just make a push down in the clip you did see it i was saying we're either waiting for bullish confluence or bearish confluence and with me how you guys know i am an advocate for having a validating stop loss making sure your stop loss is in the proper place i would much rather take a trade position to where my stop loss is validating no pass beyond a certain point meaning the 
let's say I do get stopped out on this trade, that means I was in the wrong about my overall bias, right, compared to entering later in the move and seeing a retracement or whatever the case is. This is an example to me of a good loss. If I do get stopped out on this, I'm not going to be sitting here complaining, crying, um, throwing a tamper tantrum because, oh, something happened with the market. No, that means my bias is incorrect. And really, that's what gave me the confluence in order to enter this trade um, that I really liked. Price came down, took out lows, broke structure to the upside on five minute. I waited for five minute, not one minute, and also and I'll break down why I waited for five minute because five minute gave more of a confluence, more of an understanding because fifteen minute just broke structure to the downside. So, yeah, waited for five minute because I wanted a little higher time frame confluence. Um, even then, will we still be bullish for the day and push higher? I don't know. We may, we may not. Um, but. Overall, I am bullish bias, and this follows within um, our all time frame confluence we've been following within recently. Um, daily bullish for our overall bullish, but within a retracement, one hour, same thing, 15, five. So we're going to see what price action wants to do, we're going to see what it does, and um, if we do get stopped out on this, it's going to be a good, good learning lesson to see, okay, where was our bias incorrect? Where did we go wrong with the analysis of the market? Should we have maybe um, been not more patient, but instead analyze the market a little further to see, okay, are we going to continue to retrace or are we? is our retracement done, right? So nonetheless, I really like the stop loss of this. Um, that's not primarily why I entered, but it is 100% definitely a confluence to why I entered. Um, being at the low of the fair value gap, really, yeah, it is the low of the fair value gap. I don't know when the charts, you know how when the charts are, but really at the low of the fair value gap, that's what I like to see. So that's where we entered. Nonetheless, we're going to see how price action plays out, see if we continue to make the bullish move to the upside. Um, price is currently down 0.3%. So something that would give us extra confluence is if we break 15-minute structure to the upside um, and or even 5-minute structure. So we'll see what happens. We either do or we don't. We're going to let this trade fully play out um, until SL or TP because I really want to see this trade play out. So... Nonetheless, I will be back. I say nonetheless a lot. We'll be back in, yeah, when price action continues to develop. Okay, six hours later, we're finally back. There was so much footage. I had to delete and I have to double check. Um, make sure it's not connected to my, yeah. So, there's so much footage, but they were all recorded with these AirPods. And the audio quality was just nails on a chalkboard. It was horrible. So we're going to get into it. Um, we did end up hitting TP1. and But for this trade, I did not set stops to break even due to just the wiggle room. News, consumer confidence. Yeah, yeah I kind of messed up the market today. I'm not even going to lie. Um, Forex, really. Forex. <laughs> Forex Factory. Nonetheless, this was, we had two positions. Um, show you guys. Bam. We had two positions today. We ended off the day with. Why can't they? Bam. We ended off the day with a $1,700 loss. Bam. $1,700 loss in the day. Someone commented on my video. Are these really live trades? You're not showing the meta, meta trader execution. I can show. The point of the live trade, I mean, I can show that too if you guys want to see, but the point of the live trade is for you guys to get my thought process before, during, and after the trade. Well, that's the recap. Nonetheless, there you go. That's the p and for the day. $1,700 loss. Nonetheless, let's get into why, because this was a really interesting trade, held this trade for around six hours. 
um, through news and <laughs> through consolidation. It was a lot. So let's get into it and really see because even I myself, I'm curious, should I, though first TP was really, really small, should I have taken TP set stops to break even? I had a lot of time to think about this trade and reflect on it. So um yeah let's get into it why we why we took the overall trade i already broke it down in the beginning um i am still bullish bias am i bullish currently no but but i was i and i still am overall bullish bias that's not changing not until four hour break structure to the downside around here nonetheless i say nonetheless a lot but actually getting into it, one hour broke structure to the downside. I did mention that I was bullish bias um, earlier in the day. So our entry was taken. Actually, it was taken r relatively early within the market. Kind of market open, gold market open. Price came down, took out lows, broke five minute structure to the upside, where then it continued to push up higher. Um come back down then chop before news ultimately being bullish consumer confidence bullish remember if consumer confidence is bullish that impacts the dollar index that's good for the economy bad for gold why because gold is a safe haven to where um you know we're stuff like that in the you know u.s economy if something goes wrong gold pumps up you know so nonetheless consumer confidence was bullish Consumer confidence news was bullish. That affected gold's price action is bearish. Um, and with that being said, that made price chop and chop and chop and chop until eventually here we were just like, we we got stopped out on one position, manually exit on the other. It was, uh, yeah. So with everything being, and the reason why we manually exited exited on the second position was because our, st our stop loss wasn't set or we wanted it to be set so we're when one position got stopped out we're like nope we need to do the other and we just got both out nonetheless um i want to go in and see let's do the recap now what we did right what we could have done better um and what we can continue to do better in the future because recently we really really focused on risk management and de-risking ourselves um heavily 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 from these positions um continuing to build our trade consistency so let's go in and let's see even with this what we could have done better because i have i have two things in mind there are two things in mind we could have done better well i i could have done better when entering this trade or actually during this trade and we'll go into that right now. One is TP1. So on the chart, you obviously see I have three TPs, but I did originally have a TP1 right here. Bam. So that take profit right there. TP1 was around a one to around a one of one risk reward. Overall trade was around a one to three. Yeah, one to three. So TP1 was around a one to one risk reward, somewhere in that area. And when we hit TP1, we had so much momentum pushing up to TP2. And recently, when we recently we were in a trade and we set we hit TP1, then set stops to break even, and price retraced, took us out at break even, then continued to move to the upside. So I was cautious, kept my SL open, you know, kept the trade riding and um allotted to continue playing out and with that being said in this example price did not come back stop us out and then continue the move to the upside and said it came back and stopped us out stopped us out after uh oh my gosh six hours and ten minutes Six hours, seven, yes, 12, 18, yes, six hours and 10 minutes. So, so one thing, 100% would be take your take profits. 
would I say I got greedy? If you have to question it, I would say yes. Typically, if you have to question something, the answer is typically yes and or I just was not paying attention. We know I was paying attention. No, I wanted to let the trade ride in order to see how much, you know, to, to see if we could potentially hit TP2 first instead of TP1. TP2 first instead of TP1. Hit TP2, basically. And then take off um, to position, right? And I didn't do that. So 100%, take your profit, take your profit, take your profit. And before news, this is specifically on news days, set your stop loss to break even. In this sense, we would have minimized the risk heavily, heavily, heavily. Like, we would have fully de-risked on this trade, you know, being able to see after now what price action did um, that we should have, should have, would have, could have, but we didn't um, set our stop to break even for major high impact news. That's also something we learned today. So that I am going to journal down, do um, journal down, back test on that and really just go into it and remember to set our stops at break even before news actually comes out if we're in profit um no matter whatever the case is even we'll go back to the chart Bam. because because gold was going to break structure to the upside before news actually came out so news dropped around so i'm checking break even 0.24 percent i think that's a significant percentage drop in order to showcase okay uh, I, Lonnie I think it's time to get out of the trade if it was a 0.10% drop okay you know that's in my sense that's okay in order to you know have the wiggle room for the SL right this 0.10% but a 0.24 0.3% drop that's a pretty significant drop if you ask me in 10 minutes so 100% that Set stops to break even if you're in profit before news actually comes out. Funny enough, this entire week, we've been calling out bias like no other. And we have been executing on these trades. It's just the little sporadic, like small, tiny mistakes um, that, you know, we're making in the sense of, you know, not not taking profit or not setting stops to break even in this sense. Or just like yesterday, what do we do? We forced our trade, right? <laughs> so kind of like the little nitpicky things but we're still working on it we're still getting it what is this we're still getting it down and you know the results don't really matter it's just a constant improvement of getting better every single day that's what we're here to do you know i see it in my trading i see it in a bunch of your guys trading that you guys are messaging me telling me yo lonnie my trading my trading's improving so much thank you and and i love seeing that stuff and i'm so proud of all of you that are going in and and you know really making your dream a reality it's crazy it's so inspirational not only to me but to other people um so 100 percent what we could have done better, taking our profit set stops to break even, even though, and yes, I did say bullish bias, and I said this 30 million times, and I still am bullish bias, but bullish bias currently, no, nah, I don't think so. A, we could have done one of these two things. A, not traded news today. When we were back testing consumer confidence, actually, I'll double check my journal right now because I have entire thing dedicated toward news um when we were back testing consumer confidence we were we were yeah when we were back testing consumer confidence it was fine to trade on and even now i would have said it's still fine to trade on those days but you know, we have to still be probable in the sense of, okay, market could shake a little bit. So set stops to break even, minimize your risk, de-risk, or whatever the case is. Typically on news days, I de-risk, but I've been de-risked for the entire week more so. So yeah, I didn't need to de-risk even more. But apart from that, that was really the trade recap. That was um, 
I'm trying to think of what else we can do better within this trade in order to go into tomorrow because um, there's unemployment claims and there is final GDP. We're going to see how that affects the market. I still am bullish about some gold as of right now. We're going to see how Asian session pushes market into London and let's see how, how gold market open um, is. So I still am bullish overall for the typical week. I am bullish because we rejected off that weekly for value gap um, the previous week. But apart from that, I'm going to go in, going to recap, going to journal even more. Um, see what's continuing to improve on because there's always, always, always something to improve on within our trading. Um, and yeah, so apart from that, I love you guys. Thank you for watching the video and I will see you in the next video. Let me know what else you guys want to see. I am thinking of doing a refur not refurbish a renewed version of the money printer series. We just got our whole new setup. It's not here. Um, where I'm currently at. It's at my other location, but got a whole new setup. So I'm excited to record videos, do a bunch of stuff. And apart from that, let me know what you guys want to see. Planning on doing a money printer series two, second money printer series or renewed money printer series for you guys that are struggling um, with the technical analysis stuff and even the psychological. So apart from that, I love you guys and I will see you in the next video. Peace.